What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to run your favorite PS1 games in HD on your PC. You can do 720p, 1080p, or even 4K as long as you have a monitor and a PC that can handle it. Now with this method here, and even PS1 games, some games do come out a lot better than others. As you saw with Tekken 3, Going from the standard definition to HD wasn't a big jump, but here with Spyro, you can see it's a totally different game. Kind of the same thing here with Crash Bandicoot 2, so a lot of these games do come out really nicely at 1080p or 4K. But just keep in mind, upscaling some games just aren't going to look as good as upscaling others. But some of my favorite PS1 games to upscale are racing games, like Gran Turismo 2 or Colin McRae's Rally 2.0. As you can see here, we have it running in standard definition, but when we switch over to HD, everything is so much cleaner. It's just a whole different experience. So in order to get this up and running, we're going to be using EPSXE on our Windows computer. And you really don't need a beefy system to run this at 1080p or even 4K. This is an older emulator and it works really well on lower end hardware. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this set up. First things first, you're going to need some games. Now, if you have some games laying around, you can rip them yourself. There's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to rip PS1 games from the disc, or you can get them by other means. Now, with PS1 games, there's really two formats floating around. PBP, which is pretty much a self-contained file. You only need one file here for, let's say, Tekken 3. And we also have bin and Q. Basically, all the information is stored in the bin file, and the Q file here is really just a text file telling the emulator where to start from. Now in this video, I'm going to be using PBP files because these are all over the place right now, and they're just really easy to use. Instead of having several different bin and Q files, we only have a single file per game. Next thing you'll need is a controller, or you could map it to your keyboard if you really want to. I would recommend something like the Xbox One controller. It can connect over Bluetooth or USB. If you have a PS3 or a PS4 controller, that'll also work. You can connect it over Bluetooth or over USB, just like the Xbox One controller. But for this video, I'm going to be using an Xbox One. This is really my go-to controller for PC emulation. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get the emulator downloaded. Link for this is in the description. We're going to head over to epsxe.com and we're going to grab the latest version, which is, as of making this video, 2.0.5. It also works for Mac and Linux, but we're grabbing the Windows version. Now that I have this downloaded, I'm just going to place it on my desktop for easy access. We now need to extract this. So I'm going to right click, extract, and here we are. We now have the folder with the emulator exe or the application that we're going to launch right here. And we're going to go ahead and launch it from here by double clicking. It's going to bring up a configuration wizard. From here, we're going to click on config. I'm going to choose the HLE BIOS. Now I find that this works really well with most games, but you could find an original PS1 BIOS if you really want to. I'm going to stick with the HLE BIOS. It's just much easier to use. From configuring the video, we want to choose Pete's OpenGL GPU Core 2.0. This is what comes included with EPSXE. When configuring the sound, we only have one option here, so we'll click Next. And for the CD-ROM, I'm going to choose the second option here. Now it's time to set up our controller. Like I mentioned, I'm using an Xbox controller, but a PS3 or a PS4 controller will also work. I'm going to choose Controller 1, and it's going to bring up my configuration menu. Now, as you can see here, this is the stock original PlayStation 1 controller, but some of you might want to use the DualShock. So we're going to go right up here and just choose the DualShock. Now we can configure our controller as a DualShock controller. It's really easy to do, as you can see here. So right up here, this is going to be my L2 button. Over here, I'm just going to press the button on my controller and it's going to map it. L1, D-pad, up, left, down, right. Select, start, and so on and so on. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. When we're finished here, we'll just click OK and choose Done. So we're now finished with the initial configuration. If you want to start playing, you can do that right now. You're going to be playing at pretty much the same resolution as the original PS1 was. But I want to show you how to run these at an HD resolution. It's actually pretty simple to do. So we're going to go to the Config option and choose Video. Now, there's a lot of settings in here. It might look a bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple to use. At the very bottom, there's default settings. You can set it to fast or nice, and it does give you a nice little upscale, but we're going to max this out completely. 
Like I mentioned, it doesn't take much to max out these PS1 games. I've been able to do this on a built-in Intel HD 620, so you really don't need much to get this up and running. At the very top here, I'm going to choose full screen mode. Every time I launch a game, it's going to go to full screen. Now, one thing to note is with your desktop resolution, you cannot have this scaled. So if we go to display settings, you have to be set at 100%. It's kind of weird if I have it set to 125 or 150, it's off center. Make sure you have this set to 100%. I'm going to go to 1080p because that's what this monitor is rated at. 1920 by 1080. Internal X resolution. I want to go to very high. Internal Y resolution. Ultra high. From stretching mode, I'm going to leave it at zero. Stretch to full window size. Render mode. You can leave this alone if you'd like to, but I usually choose number one here. Render to P buffer. Threading mode. I always set to three. Two threads. Moving down to texture filtering. I always set this to eight. High res textures, 2x SAL. I want to show my frame rate on screen. Now you don't have to choose this if you don't want to. As for the compatibility tab, I usually leave this all like it sits from the factory. Two, three, and one. Full screen filtering, shader effects, full screen smoothing. This is what I leave it at. And I set shader level to the maximum number four. And finally, under miscellaneous, MDEC filter, you make sure this is checked here. It's just going to make your movies look less pixelated. Disable screensaver and special game fixes. There's another menu under special game fixes. And this doesn't apply to everything. And most everything that I've tested here works really well without any of these fixes. So your best bet would be just kind of look through this. And if you notice an issue with a game you're playing, see if there's a fix in here or do a quick Google search. For instance, this works nice with Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. It ignores small frame buffer moves. You can turn this on if it's needed. And that's it for all of my settings here. This is what I use. Now I do want to talk about one last thing here. So with the plugin that we're using here, Pete's OpenGL plugin 2.0, there's actually a newer version, but I haven't really moved over to it. 2.0 comes with EPSXE, and it seems to work really well with all the games that I wanted to play. But if you want the newer version, I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's version 2.9. You can download it here, extract it, and just place it in your plugins folder inside of your EPSXE folder. So now it's time to start playing. File, open game list, and we'll start Spyro Year of the Dragon. So it's no remastered version for PS4, but overall, this looks really great for a PS1 game. Now, if you're used to playing this, let's say on the Raspberry Pi using RetroPie, you notice how clean everything looks, and that's really what it comes down to, taking those jaggies out of all of the edges. Now I'm gonna move back to the native resolution and just give you a quick look. So obviously it makes a big difference with these PlayStation 1 games, but like I mentioned, some of these games just don't look great or really take advantage of this upscaling. For instance, I really don't like the way that Tekken 3 looks when I'm playing it in 1080p or 4K. I'd rather just play it at the native resolution, but that's just me. For a majority of the games that I like to play, I think they look really good upscaled here. And especially if you're dealing with older racing games, it just makes a world of difference. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Unfortunately, this is not available for the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie or any other distro that I know of except for Android. And unfortunately, with the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, or the Raspberry Pi 4, we just don't have a really good port of Android yet. But either way, I recommend trying this out on your laptop or PC. You really won't be disappointed. And if you can't go 1080p or 4K, at least try 720p. It looks a lot better than the native resolution of the PlayStation 1. I figured I'd go ahead and make this video. I know a a lot of people are stuck at home right now and this will just give you something else to do. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All links for everything that I mentioned are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.